Hi, I'm Courtney Reed, and I'm a PhD student at Queen Mary University of London. Today I'll present our paper, Surface Electromyography for Sensing Performance Intention and Musical Imagery in Vocalists, with my co-author Andrew McPherson. This research presents surface electromyography for vocal performance. In doing so, we link concepts of mental imagery, embodiment, and lived experience, and demonstrate autobiographically informed design through these concepts. As well, we'll show how electromyography can be used in both singing studies and in HCI studies in general. The voice presents an interesting design challenge in that, while being very important for communication, our personalities and expression, and of great musical significance, it's also quite covert with lots of hidden movements and physiology. Historically, vocal pedagogy is based very exclusively on sound. In addition, vocalists tend to have very abstract relationships with their body and their voice. Furthermore, as a result of this hidden nature of the voice, misinterpretations are very common from audio, leading to problems with digital analysis and by the own human ear. And finally, there are a lot of common misunderstandings about the body and voice physiology as a whole due to, again, its covert nature. This misunderstanding of the voice can at the very least lead to miscommunication. Even worse, it could potentially lead to permanent physiological damage when things go wrong. Understanding that we rely on interpretation of movement, which is audio-based when it comes to the voice, is key in designing. When we understand that sound does not necessarily equal action and intention, we can begin to incorporate other methods into design. Different gestures tend to produce similar sounds. In this study, we focus on the body-based relationships that the vocalists have with their instrument. This relationship is based around musical imagery. Musical imagery is the multimodal representation of how a performance should look, feel, and sound. There are many found neural correlates with musical imagery, and it is found that imagining something is neurologically similar to perceiving or executing that action. Therefore, activation in the brain occurs during imagination of singing in the same way that it would occur when actually singing. Mental rehearsal can help to train action pathways and forms the basis for the representations that we make within the body. Between HCI, design, and cognitive science, these three different topics, lived experience, embodiment, and mental imagery, share many features in common. Firstly, the body and the mind are viewed as being inseparable. There's this action of oneness with the tool, which the voice is highly personal, already existing within the body, and sensations and imagery become ingrained through exposure and environment. It is also believed that this relationship is always changing depending on our environment and how we perceive it. In order to capture this intersection and the way that the body-based relationships exist for vocalists, we propose using surface electromyography to look at the voice without needing to use audio-based methods. Electromyography measures the electrical neural activation of the muscles using electrodes. In this case, we use surface electromyography where the electrodes are adhered to the skin. One key reason that surface electromyography is a great performance tool is due to the idea of what we call the negative latency. A neural impulse must first exist in order for the muscle con to contract. Once the muscle contracts, then a movement occurs, and then we can finally see it and determine what that movement was. As a result, impulses are a precursor to movement. Coined by Tanaka, this negative latency describes the fact that the neural impulse lies at the beginning of the action path, prior to where we actually see movement. It can also be thought of as being an input to a gesture. In this sense, we can use it to make up for latency in a system. In addition, as needed to be done with the voice, we can observe movements which are covert or do not produce some sort of noticeable or visible result. In addition to detecting vocalized singing, surface electromyography is also capable of detecting subvocalization. Subvocalization is the movement of the phonatory muscles when you are not speaking or singing. As a result of the neural link between imagined and executed action, these muscular activations still occur during imagined action. This happens when we are imagining singing or speaking, and this can occur during mental rehearsal of a piece, reading music, or other applications of musical imagery. It can be observed through surface electromyography, even when no sound is produced. Surface electromyography can be employed for different interaction perspectives. This technology can be used for both a third and a first person point of view. In typical third-person interaction, we are viewing the performer as we stand apart from them. This tends to be more objective and allows us to observe and analyze the actions of someone using the technology, while they themselves are not aware of it. 
With SEMG, this could be somebody wearing the system and their muscular activation patterns, the force of the muscular activations, and so on being observed. This tells us more about the performance and the performer as we observe it as a bystander. On the other hand, first-person interactions revolve around the performer viewing themselves in the system. This tends to be more subjective and more feeling-based and can help observe and analyze the interaction a user has with the system. For a surface electromyography, this would involve the observation of response and change in behavior as the user becomes aware of their own involvement with the system. This tells us about the performer's relationship and collaboration with the system as they are involved in the process and view themselves. In a previous paper, we explore the third-person perspectives of this surface electromyography system in order to view both vocalized and subvocalized singing. However, for the current publication, we wish to explore more of the first-person interactions that arise when the user knows what's going on during the interaction and different elements of their movement are sonified. As well, we bring this attention to autobiographical design and how the interaction is shaped through this. The creation of a new system for vocal surface electromyography was done through a long-term autobiographical design by me. I have currently been living with the system for more than a year, and through this process I've been able to incorporate lived experience and embodied technique which I have been building over the last 10 plus years as a semi-professional vocalist. Through this use by myself I was able to develop it in its intended environment. As well I was able to use it with established vocal practices and imagery. I want to be clear that, as this is an autobiographical design, my experience is not a universal experience. This is designed for the user by the user instead of a hypothetical user. Therefore, the system has an individual relationship and inherently describes my use with it. Others would likely interact differently, and if given the time, would probably tinker with it in the same way that I have. Observing others changing the design through its use could potentially suggest some universality, or perhaps more diverse features, but will always reflect those users and their individual relationship with the system. For an example of this system in action, an improvisation was done taking electromyography from my suprahyoid region, the suprahyoid region being those muscles which lie above the hyoid bone and control different vocal aspects, such as raising the pitch of the voice, text, and other jaw, chin, and neck movements. The picture on the right depicts where the two electrodes fitting into this system would be placed. And in context, the electrodes are fixed onto the skin using an adhesive paste. The end muscle electrode and the mid muscle electrode are placed on the suprahyoid region with the reference electrode being placed on a non-muscular tissue, in this case, my earlobe. In addition to the conductive paste used to adhere the electrodes to the skin, the electrodes and the cables are secured in place using a non-woven fabric tape. The voltage from the activation of my suprahyoid region in this case was used to control aspects of digital vocal processing in SuperCollider. In this case, the electrical activations correspond to the frequency of a ring modulator I've placed on my voice. Here is an example of how you can hear this. The first part of this I call reacting and relearning. Through design and iterative testing, I learned that the suprahyoid region moves a lot compared to some of the other muscles around the larynx. I ended up adopting some unorthodox practices in terms of vocal technique. For instance, moving my chin very far in and out. This is actually not a great way to sing, as it can introduce a lot of tension to the voice, and my voice teachers over the years have spent a lot of time training me to not do this. As I was able to get the most interaction out of changing my vowel shape, I ended up changing my text a little bit more than I changed my pitch, and this can be heard in the very strange and also perhaps undesirable vowel shapes that I've been using. As well, another key aspect I want to bring attention to is the difference between conscious and unconscious movement. 
By sonifying things which are not normally sonified, some things become more apparent. For instance, I actually did find that my breathing became startling at first. Much of my movement during performance would have been previously subdued, and I would have remained quite still. However, in this case, I was moving my head around quite a bit. The goal of this research was to design for collecting information about vocal practice and technique. In reality, the vocal practice actually changed through its use. From this, we know that when the user is aware of the presence of the system, the system is not so great actually for collecting data on specific musical practice. However, it's good for collecting data on how the user interacts and adapts with the system. In this case, the user and the system are dependent on each other as co-collaborators, and they shape each other's performance. In conclusion, surface electromyography methods can help in uniting aspects of cognitive science, HCI research, and design practices through focus on user intention and experience. Musical systems which are based around performer intention can use both conscious and unconscious body movement to form interaction, and bringing attention to embodied techniques which have become highly internalized allow performers to play with their knowledge and experience in performance. As well, we demonstrate the potential of such an interaction through a first case used by a vocalist. Thank you for coming, and please do feel free to contact me with any questions about this research.